Okay, so now into that dry but essential content to cover. Um, we're going to talk some basic biology, structure and function of genetic material. So every species, as we said, has a unique set of genes that distinguishes it that, from that of other species. That's your genome. And the complete set of genes for our species is the human genome. Individual human beings each have a genome with small but significant variations. So if you're looking at the person next to you thinking you have absolutely nothing in common with them, you are 99.9% .9 wrong. Only 0.1% of the base pairs are coded differently in human beings. So you are 99.9% .9 exactly like the person sitting next to you. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea of the scale of how much genetic material there is that that tiny, tiny fraction of it is, in, is responsible <coughs> for all of the inherited variation you see in human beings and that there are no two of us exactly alike. One way to think about the genome. So think about the broad concept of genome as cinema. Each species has its own <coughs> genre. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So for example, we have rom-coms, we have horror movies, we have science fiction. We'll, we will say that the human genome could be compared to superhero movies. And within that genre, a lot of things are the same. Every superhero has a tragic origin story. They go through some transformation or some discovery, and suddenly they are fighting equally super human bad guys. In the end, they always win. So there's a lot of things that are the same, but individual movies could be represented by an individual film in that category. For our sake, we'll say that human genome is like this, an individual human's genome is like the script for Endgame. Okay, movie that some people think is awesome. Um, this script has two authors, each contributed half of the material. So we have maternal DNA and paternal DNA. That material that they contributed is organized into scenes. That makes sense. Those would be chromosomes or don't make sense, depending on your take on the film. But those scenes are composed of lines and stage directions, genes. The genes live in the chromosomes. And the chromosomes package the DNA so that it's a little more organized. These directions are composed of words and printed on pages, on paper, in a precise sequence. And that's like your base pairs, your base ingredients. Okay, so there's your script. And you can see it has lines for the actors. It has directions. Um, it might have fight choreography. It might have directions for the lighting guy, but it kind of contains all of the directions for producing that film, just like your DNA has all the directions for producing the proteins in your cells, among other things. Okay. Extending the metaphor, every cell in the human body, except for sex cells, which are your ova and sperm, get the entire set of directions. They get all of the DNA, all 46 of those chromosomes, but they only express characteristics of their cell type. Once that cell is cast in a role, once it becomes a skin cell, a liver cell, a nephron, a neuron, it is only going to behave that way unless we manipulate it in a laboratory. But for our natural biological purposes, they all have an entire set of 46 chromosomes, except for sperm and eggs, just like every person involved in the film, except for Tom Holland, because he leaks spoilers, gets a copy of the whole script, even though each one only recites his or her own lines. So Tony Stark is never going to deliver uh, Captain America's lines. It's just not going to happen. It's going to behave once, once it's cast in that role, it's going to behave in character. Um, Tom Holland only gets half the script because, you know, he only needs his part. And that's kind of the way the sex cells operate. There are genes responsible for directing, choreographing. They regulate the expression of genetic material so that the cells stay in character. Which code, uh, proteins they code when, um, when the cells die, all that stuff is governed by other genes on the genome. So DNA in mammals, and I know I have to fix that slide. It's linear. It's double-stranded. It kind of looks like that twisted ladder. It's composed of four bases and combinations, various combinations, and they're all attached to sugar molecules. They're held into that ladder shape by phosphate. That is not that important to you. It's sort of like knowing, you know, how paper's made to understand the script for our purposes. For biological 
research, I'm sure there's much more application in that. But for us, it's a nice to know, not a needs to know thing. I'll get to the needs to know. The nucleotide bases form in pairs. It's a very organized division. Guanine binds to cytosine only. Let me get my pen out and I'll highlight it on this little picture slide here. So guanine to cytosine. I don't know how many of you um, do Lego or have ever built with Legos. They make different um, variations. There's a classic Lego. It's one size. The little knobs only fit inside other classic Lego. Um, Duplo is like twice the size and those little pieces will not connect to a classic Lego. They only connect with each other. It's the same with your base pairs. So guanine only to cytosine and adenine only to thymine in DNA. RNA, the thymine gets replaced by your cell. Don't get too caught up in that. That's sort of a little more extensive than we need to be. But okay, so you have these base pairs and all of your genetic information is coded in these base pairs. Let me go back to having a mouse. And we'll go to the next slide and I'll sort of flesh that out a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so purines. Ooh, I have to get rid of those little. Let's see if I can do that. Hold on. Oh, never mind. Um, moving on. Purines are the adenine and guanine. Thymine and cytosine are pyrimidines. Okay. If you wanted to know why, let's go. back here and pyrimidines have a Y, thymine, cytosine have a Y, purines, adenine, guadine don't have a Y. So that's kind of like an easy way to remember that. Why is that important? Well, it might not be all that important when we move on in the discussion, but what's important to know is that that sequence, if you can rip part of that ladder off and test a fragment of it, if you can predict one side of the ladder, you can predict the other side of the ladder. So if I have a sequence that goes G-A-T-T-A-C-A, -T -T -A -A, I know that it's going to be matched with its opposite, its pair. It'll be C-T-A-A-T-G-T. -T -T. So we might do some fun things with that, say on a quiz or something like that. Um, let's see. There. Okay. So think about it. Let's do a little test. If a strand of DNA is composed of 30% guanine, how much of it is composed of adenine? And these are the kind of questions that scientists ponder, so why not? Let's do it. The answer would be 20%. Wait, why isn't it 70%? Well, let's take a look at it. Guanine pairs with cytosine, so we have 30% guanine, 30% cytosine. That gives us 60% of our strain of DNA. That leaves 40% for the base pairs, adenine and thymine, half of each 20-20. So that's how we would get that. Okay, so we're going to stop here. Next video will be about DNA replication and the cell.